Tour St. Louis, Cancellara's Hour, Wigo's Tour, Cyclocross, Tech of the Week, Tweet of the Week. Welcome to GCN News. In today's show, Gerrans on top down under, Quintana sizzles in the Argentine sun, Cancellara contemplates the hour, Wigo for the tour, the finale of the UCI Cyclocross World Cup in France, and a tech of the week is the Turbo Muin Fluid Trainer, and tweet of the week is from Bernie Eisel. New Australian road race champion Simon Gerrans of Orica Greenedge has won the Santos Tour Down Under for the third time in his career. Oh, this is a huge honour to, uh, to win the Tour Down Under um, and to cap it all off being on Australia Day as well. Um, and racing for an Australian team, it just doesn't get much better. In a spectacularly exciting battle, Gerrans edged out Aussie legend and 2011 Tour de France winner Cadell Evans of BMC by a solitary second, with young Italian sensation Diego Ulissi of Lampe Merida in third in what was arguably the most memorable TDU in years, with daily crowds to rival that of a Grand Tour, Lotto Belasol's Andre Greipel took out another two sprint stage wins to take his career tally to an amazing 16. Now, if you missed any of what was an absolutely scintillating race, our man Dan Lloyd was on the ground in the Tour Down Under, and there's reports from every single stage online now. Now the first of two new features, Caption of the Week. Pleased to meet you. Now, I'm sure you can do a lot better than that, now, to win a GCN bottle, please post your captions on Facebook. Diminutive climbing sensation Nara Quintana of Movistar has taken out the Tour San Luis in Argentina in a devastating display of climbing prowess. Will certainly have his Grand Tour rivals looking nervous. Quintana's irrepressible climbing aside, it was American Phil Gaiman making his debut for Garmin Sharp, who was the revelation of the race. After taking out stage one from a long break, he bravely held onto the leader's jersey through to the mountaintop finish on stage four, won by Quintana, only losing his grip to the Tour de France runner-up in the stage five TT. The final GC being Quintana, Gaiman, and the podium rounded out by Argentinian Sergio Godoy of the local team San Luis Somos Todos. The final round of the UCI World Cyclocross Championships in Nome, France, was a muddy affair. The trio came to the finish with over a minute in hand, and it was Belgian Tom Musen of Telnet who beat local hero Francis Murray of FDJ, with German Philip Walsbielen of BKCP Power Plus in third. Lars van der Haar of the Rabobank development team, who took fourth place on the day to seal the UCI World Cup overall. Now coming into form just at the right time, reigning world champion Marianne Voss of Rabobank took out a stunning solo win ahead of European and British champion Helen Wyman of Kona. Now American Katie Compton of Trek had already wrapped up the overall World Cup but pulled out of round seven after the first lap due to an asthma attack. Now I'm really looking forward to seeing how these guys perform at the Cyclocross Worlds next weekend. A Spanish newspaper last week reported that Swiss powerhouse uncobbled classic specialist Fabian Cancellara of Trek Factory Racing is to make an attempt on the coveted hour record, possibly at the velodrome in Palma, Mallorca, where he's recently been training with his teammates. According to Cancellara's manager, a time slot shortly after Roubaix and Flanders would be ideal to harness the superb form he should have at this time. I, for one, would like a ringside seat to that. What do you guys think? Talking last week, Sir Bradley Wiggins has stated the main aim for his 2014 season is actually to get back into the team for the Tour de France. Now previously Bradley had said he had no interest in riding the Tour, the last one in 2012, because of the out and out leader status of Chris Froome. The Team Sky squad has yet to be announced, but who would bet against Sir Bradley Wiggins lining up as domestic deluxe to Mr Froome on the grid in Yorkshire. Wiggins is lining up in the Terreno Adriatico and for the first time ever is going to have a tilt at the Tour of California in May. The GCN Strava Club is approaching 3,300 members, so let's take a look at this week's leaderboard. Now there's a continued battle between Durian Ryder and Mario, but the stats for this week, Durian Ryder tops the leaderboard with 1,652 kilometres. The longest ride is from Mario Fonseca with 450.3 kilometres but it's Durian Ryder who's the top of the climbing rankings with 16,395 metres. Can anybody topple these two from the leaderboard? I think I might have to dust off my own bike. Now, member of the week is Gary Blingblang, who showed Dorian Ryder he's not the only vegan that can rack up over 1,000 kilometres in a week. 
Have you been watching our GCN training videos lately? Three, two, one, go! 45 seconds flat out. Fast and furious! Well, we want to see tweet or post pictures of you using your GCN training diaries using the hashtag WinWithGCN to get yourself one of those shiny GCN bottles. We've had one in the office for a couple of weeks and it's still causing a bit of a stir. Elite Turbo Muin is the world's first fluid direct drive trainer. You remove your back wheel completely with this trainer and fix your bike directly to the main frame. This has some distinct advantages over traditional turbo trainers. Namely, it eliminates any back tyre wear, it reduces noise significantly, and it more efficiently transfers your pedalling power to the resistance unit of the trainer. The noise is reduced even more by the use of a fluid resistance unit. Elite have used a large 6kg flywheel with a maximum power resistance of 2,500 watts, outputted at 60 km an hour. And that should be more than enough for most people this side of Dan Lloyd. I don't know if I can drive in the big ring on this thing. The trainer is compatible with Shimano and SRAM 9, 10, 11 speed cassettes, as well as Campagnolo. I quite fancy having a go myself. Mike, there was one in the office. Have you, have you seen it? On the channel this week, Monday Mechanicals, more ingenious roadside bodges with Dan Lloyd. Well, if you just need to be seen, you can have like a strobe effect. On Tuesday night, it's the first hangout of the year. Wednesday, it's how to ride in strong winds. A limited amount of space available on the road, and so at some point one rider has to sit in the wind. Thursday, the top 10 riders to look out for at this weekend's Cyclocross World Championships. Friday, it's Niels Albert's Colnago Prestige Cyclocross Bike. Saturday, it's the third indoor training video with Paul Ryman. This is going to be the toughest yet, the Tough 40. Hold on, three, two, one, down. Our tweet of the week this week is from Bernard Eisel. Now, Bernie goes on to say, I thought you were in the Tour San Luis at Taylor Finney. Since when do you work at the Hilton in Adelaide? It's a cracking photo. Yet another new item, it's selfie of the week. Now we're asking you to post your selfies on Twitter or on Facebook. It could be you and a cycling superstar or just when you're out training and a stunning backdrop. I did one last week with Bertie, nice and sneaky. Now whilst Dan Loy was soaking up the rays in the Tour Down Under last week, I was sat at home in the pouring rain. But next week I've got my revenge as I'm off to the Tour of Dubai for GCN. Totes looking forward to it too. More roadside bodges. No, it's... <laughs> Ingenious botches. Gary Bling Blang. <laughs> I am excited though, I just couldn't convey it. Elite Turbo Muin Direct Drive Trainer is the world's only fluid direct drive trainer. Ulrika Cut. So I'm thinking of Ulrika. <laughs> Don't put that in. Oh no. Hi, I'm Paul, and welcome to my GCN indoor cycling session. I will take you on a 35 minute cycling journey with a variety of intervals along the way. We will track our progression with a